Yo. Yes. Happy Saturday, people. August 14th, 2021. It's half past 104. Episode 104. Yeah. Been a lovely mood today. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Got a, got a few things on my mind, you know? Let's do it. <laughs> oh, happy weekend, y'all. I am H. So first, the thing that made me cringe this uh, not too long ago, actually, was in the 7-Eleven watching a non-employee just got his bare hands on a pair of tongs, just dipping in all the, uh, <laughs> all the spreadings, all the spreadings and the toppings, just noodling around and everything. We don't know if he washed his hands. No. And it's just something about a complete stranger. I didn't get anything. I didn't get any food products. I think I got like a, a I think I got a card for like Hulu or Netflix. I think, yeah, it was Hulu. Uh, yeah. And um, <laughs> just to watch somebody just doing that bare utensil that's not even a store employee. And here we are fighting people over wearing a mask. They've been doing that for years. How are we not? How are we not uh, up in arms about that? God, where did that guy come from? How many things did he touch before he put his hands on that piece of apparatus that's used to touch everybody's, uh, everybody's like jalapenos or whatever uh, wastewater, <laughs> whatever's floating around in that wastewater that they put on the damn hot dog or whatever else? Ugh. God, what if he just off? What if off the security camera, he just decided to scratch his, scratch his back with it <laughs> and do, oh, God, I shudder to think. So I'm watching All American. It was a better show than I thought it would be. Actually, it's a good show. I was wa watching All American, and uh, I think it's pretty cool to see Tate, because Tate Diggs usually plays like a, uh, like a clean cut, uh, like a like a white boy that's not white. Those are the roles he usually plays. So uh, yeah, it was good to see him play a role where he actually has a history of and is not afraid to uh, do a little bit of dirt. Um, yeah, if you hear interference in the background, that's uh, that's my fan for this episode in the back. So I hope it doesn't mess things up. Too bad. Yes. Uh, and but the thing that killed me about on on All America All American is that his best friend, the girl, uh, the uh, the girl that he grew up with, uh, she has a girlfriend, and her girlfriend is named Patience, and they have a Patience, right? They have a falling out, and how do you how do you fuck up by a person named Patience? <laughs> how do you? And it made me think, how, how many of us have those type of names like Sin Serenity <laughs> that you just drew them to the edge? You know, she drew Patience to the point where Patience was just like, I'm good. I'm good. How do you do that to somebody named Patience? How many of you have had uh, boyfriends or girlfriends with, uh, with names that like, yeah, like Serenity, like Hope, <laughs> like Faith? Like faith, and they're just like, oh, I, I can't. How do you make those type of people uh, walk away from you? What shit do you do? Like, do you use those 7-Eleven tongs to like <laughs> to put pickles on a burger at the barbecue? Then like, yeah, I don't know. Do you just like, oh man? And it's just a thing about people. And and this is a, this is me personally. I, I got to deal with this. Is that we go to these places. We go to all these places, and I, I just can't have somebody, uh, you got your feet out, fam. I don't care if you're not touching the food with your feet. Why are you anywhere in the area where food is being served or prepared 
where you're where it's okay for you to have your feet out. I mean, and I I don't know. It's this is I I'm I don't and I'm to, I don't have to work on it because I know I'm fucking right. <laughs> I gotta have your feet out around the fool, man. Like yeah. So I have a few articles that stood out to me. Uh yeah. And uh no, first I wanna ask y'all how many of y'all uh on the first day of school was ready to punch somebody in the school staff over this max shit. <laughs> how many of y'all was ready? How many of y'all actually did? Because that's my first story. That's the first one that I think this dude got banned from the school for a year already. First thing, knock somebody's dick in the dirt <laughs> over that mask shit and his kids. But yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> who's not, who's done with that shit already? He said first day, dad hospitalizes teacher in mass fight on first day of school. He's done. A father of a student at a California elementary allegedly assaulted and hospitalized an educator at his daughter's school over the enforcement of indoor mass mandates. The teacher was bleeding, knocked his dick in the dirt. <laughs> Amador County Unified School District Superintendent Tori Gibson told news outlet KCRA in Sacramento. Okay, he had some lacerations on the face some bruising on his face, and a pretty good knot on the back of his head. <laughs> Yo, what happened? Wednesday's violence reportedly unfolded near the uh, close of the first day of classes in the new school year at Sutter Creek Elementary School in North Central California. Uh, the alleged assailant saw his daughter and the school's principal in an office both wearing masks. Okay. Vaccinated teachers in the school are reportedly allowed to remove their masks when students are not around. Okay. When the angry dad saw some instructors doing just that in the teacher's lounge, he reportedly became upset, alleging some sort of conspiracy and charged that children are being treated like animals. This is why you don't listen to like to these to these news stations where one day they're saying that it's okay to not wear the mask and one day they're saying it's okay. They're, they're twisting everybody around and they're they, they're causing like they're devising us against each other and I would say the best thing the, the best thing for you to do man is to anybody is to do your own research ask your own like ask your own doctors I would guess like don't listen to the propaganda don't fall for the head fake the accused assailant began getting verbally aggressive toward the school the school's principal, hey, fuck you, when a teacher, <laughs> but you would put me in the corner, I'm grown, when a teacher, when a teacher intervenes, the school superintendent claims the situation quickly escalated and the alleged victim had to be treated in an area hospital, that's how fast it went from zero to 100 over some goddamn mass, and the daughter is probably sitting there watching them, the little girl is sitting there watching his, watching her dad get busy. So war people trying to educate this. The, yeah, Gibson told CNN, CNN, it's baffling that parents behave this way toward people trying to educate their children. This isn't, no, 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 no. I agree and I don't agree because this is a, it's an aggravating fucking factor. And it's highly frustrating and it's highly aggravating because if we were in situations as parents, if we were just sending our kids to school, and like we didn't have to worry about pan a pandemic. Yo, it's stories all across the board. I can't I can't tell you just in the past 36 hours, in the past 48 hours, how many stories I've came across where students and teachers alike have been either exposed or they've caught the or they've caught the uh the the COVID-19. Uh yeah, yeah. It's like it's so aggravating, it's so frustrating that it's natural for when people want want a solution to something and they can't find a solution. It's way easier for them to get aggravated at these type of things. Like, yeah, I'm not saying that he should have beat the dude up. <laughs> I'm not saying that that he should have beat up the school staff, but I understand. I understand. Like, yeah, sad as it is, I'm not shocked this happened. See, Gibson told CNN, people are tired of mandates and being told what to do. 
it's I don't think it would be so much as being told what to do, but it's being told what to do. And at the end of the day, after we all corroborate, the shit ain't getting no better. So it's like, what are you? So what are you just jerking us around? Like, I don't want to hear any. I don't want to hear any directions from anybody unless y'all telling me it's the right thing to do. Unless it's right. Unless I'm gonna see immediate results where the shit is working. Other than that, you can shut the hell up. And I'm gonna wear my mask, and my kid is gonna wear his. Or either that. How about this? I'll just get some books and I'll homeschool him or her until y'all figure this shit out. A letter sent to parents from the superintendent reminding them that the schools don't make the rules, but we must enforce pandemic restrictions in order to keep schools operating. Parents were also told that in any event, violence will not be tolerated. <laughs> oh, shit. I think in another article, they said that they banned him from the school. He can't come. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh, my God, yo. Keep your cool people, man. Like, yeah, understand that it's probably just as frustrating for teachers and faculty members just as much as it is for, like, the students and, uh, and, and the parents. My non-alcoholic beverage this early evening. Yo, them fucking bugs. Yeah, yo, them bugs are coming off the trees and they're everywhere. Now I've seen something on the, uh, now I've seen an article or something that said that those are the bugs that used to kill whenever you see them. And they look like, they look like leaves, but they look like brown leaves falling off the trees. And then when they open their wings, it's like two red eyes on their wings. And like, what the hell is this? I mean, and they're just all over the place. What the hell are those? That's what we should be worried about. <laughs> man charged. Here we go. Man charged with murdering teenager two days after being released from prison over COVID-19 fears. So, if that's what you were going to do, homeboy, why didn't you just murder somebody in prison and save yourself a goddamn trip? <laughs> just save yourself a trip, man. You can keep your same bunk and everything. You don't even have to give your ramens away. Man, <laughs> a New Jersey man. Oh, it, it cuts kind of deep when you hear it's from Jersey. A New Jersey man has been. Yo, hold up. I, I, I better not know this dude. A New Jersey man has been charged with murder just two days after being released from prison through a state effort to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in detention facilities. Authority said Jerry Crawford. I don't know this guy. Jerry Crawford, 25, a convicted burglar, was released on November 4th on public health emergency credits to mandatory parole supervision, the New Jersey Department of Corrections told the Washington Examiner. Uh, what happened? What did he do? On November 6th, two days after his release, Crawford and another man allegedly shot and murdered an 18-year-old man. Yo, bruh, you had a... You found a loop, a loophole in the system found you. You didn't even find a loophole in the system. A loophole in the system found you where you had a chance to hit the bricks and turn your life around at 25, and this is what you do? Not even two days later. It just go right back. Wow. Couldn't be me. Bless his heart. Footage from that apartment complex displayed, displayed Crawford, his accomplice, and the victim before the shooting, according to court documents. Crawford and the, other, and the other man were indicted last week on first-degree murder charges and first-degree conspiracy. You ain't even get a chance to, like, have sex or have a good meal. Two days. You ain't even get a chance to enjoy showering without worrying about if somebody's looking at your butt. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't even have a good chance to enjoy showering without, without fear of being groped. Yeah, <laughs> flagrantly groped. A, a flagrant three groping. Crawford was released along with thousands of inmates among, uh, under New Jersey's emergency plan following deaths and a, short, and a soaring infection rate in state prisons attributed to COVID-19. Yo, I bet you a majority or a large part of them inmates that hit the bricks off of them charges, they went and got themselves a job. They did what they had to do. It's like, yo, I caught a lucky break, but no, not this guy. Not this guy. 
<laughs> Everyone but this guy. New Jersey was one of the dozens of states that released inmates to curb the pandemic's impact, and many of those released were arrested a short time later. But no, not this guy. He needs to go back. There's unfinished business. He's reclaiming his time. <laughs> He's reclaiming his time. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Get the fucker off my page, man. Elite, elite, elite. How do you fuck up by a woman named Patience? Like, <laughs> how do you, like, yeah, a girl, it's like, yo, how do you, how do you live that down? A Texas hospital is so overwhelmed with COVID-19 cases that a man shot six times has waited a week for surgery. That's how bad it is in certain places. These are the same places where they wanted to like hold round and derbies and all. I know it is. I know it is. These are the people. Yeah. Houston man Joel Valdez is awaiting surgery to repair broken bones after having been shot six times. Yo, after a week, what happens when your fucking bones start healing back improperly? And like, oh, that is hard. The hospital he's in is overwhelmed with COVID-19 cases. Valdez has been waiting in his hospital bed since last Saturday. A spokesman told Fox 26 that doctors at Ben Taub Hospital have to balance cases because of spiking COVID-19 numbers. A Texas man who was shot six times one week ago is anxiously awaiting surgery at a hospital, a Houston hospital, where doctors are struggling to respond to COVID-19 cases. It was so good just a week ago. Everybody is really surprised i'm still in this bed a week later yeah like yeah three of those shots left one of his shoulders broken the body part on which he's waiting to get surgery okay so it's not life threatening having broken bones and bullets in me for over a week now is a little frustrating and i'm probably sure that if you had to catch if you had to catch sick see somebody that's just uh slightly annoyed at you over uh something stupid like, <laughs> I don't think they'll send six shots your way unless, I don't think not too many people are getting uh, six shots sent their way unless they probably did something to deserve six shots. And that's just my opinion. <laughs> Give your ass some time to think about, well, maybe I shouldn't do anything to have people that wants to shoot at me six times. Due to strained resources, surgical patients are being prioritized. Okay, so he's not in life threatening. Yeah, hospital uh, hosp health officials are still urging all Americans to get vaccinated against the coronavirus, especially as the Delta variant continues to spike in various parts of the country. So if I, hey, 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 I just got shot six times, but I got vaccinated. Are you going to put me to the front of the list? No, fuck you. <laughs> because I got vaccinated. I got shot. I don't have COVID. I got shot. Can you put? But I have the vaccine. Can you put me to the front of the list? What next? Yes, we're playing the game of keep clicking the same thumbnail because all my thumbnails are black and it's called profile. <laughs> because they all look the same why women are deciding not to have kids is because of men god damn it god damn did i not tell you that is women out there named heaven and serenity <laughs> and what faith and hope and <laughs> and all these other beautiful names patience patience yeah and <laughs> we drive them to the edge no wonder they want to they don't want to reproduce with us why would they why women are deciding not to have kids hey they would rather send somebody to shoot us shoot us 30 times they like that woman from brazil last night that uh yeah i didn't get a chance to well i did that article on the audio i lost about nine minutes of video 
on that Facebook Live shit. Screw you, Facebook Live. You screwed me. Diana Bolek was never someone who dreamed of becoming a mother. FNL, baby. FNL. From an early age, she knew. <laughs> from an early age, she knew deep down that she didn't want children. Maybe it stemmed from seeing uh, her mother sacrifice her dream of becoming a flight attendant and work three jobs to raise two kids alone. Or maybe it was that other endeavors interested her more. Like not getting pregnant so I don't have to deal with the man that just parks his ass on the couch. Um, always looking forward to the next thing. Said Wallach, who works in local government in San Francisco. Being a parent was never one of them. Because why... Why have kids when you can live like I don't? Still, the idea of not having children seem taboo. It should not. Come on. It really shouldn't. The idea of not having children seem taboo, that's a society thing. That's not like, don't let society put tags on you that if you're a woman, you have to have children. If you don't want to, fuck it, you don't want to. It was until a few years ago when she started getting serious with her partner that she really reckoned with her feelings. By the time she and her husband got married last November, they reached a the conclusion they didn't want kids. See, the husband was with it! I love this relationship. This is a, this is, this is a textbook relationship of finding a partner that at the, at the bare bones, at the meat and potatoes of the situation, they agree on the same thing for the most part. Do you want kids? No, fuck them kids. Do you want kids? No, fuck them kids. Hey, let's start booking these trips, baby. I mean, yeah, that's the love language right there. Finding somebody that's like, oh, do you want to do this? Do you like this? No. By society standards, are we supposed to have 2.3 children and a dog by the time we're 35 years old? Well, well, fuck society standards. I don't want no kids. Yeah. <laughs> November, they had reached a the conclusion they didn't want kids. Bullock is now 37 and doesn't see herself changing her mind. Yeah. Not having children. And children are a blessing. Yeah, they can be a blessing. They are a blessing. But if you don't want kids, then that's your preference. Not having children gives her a sense of freedom that her friends who are parents don't have. And I'm telling you, all her friends are probably telling her, wait until you have your baby, and you're going to be so happy. They want her to have a baby so she could be miserable with the rest of the... <laughs> so she could, yeah, so she could wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and, uh, and, get, and get projectile vomit pea soup all over her face. Yeah. <laughs> to able, and now that they're vaccinated, she and her husband have been able to eat at restaurants, attend concerts, and travel without worrying about worrying of worrying about risking their child's safety. Shit, these these are people. This is a group that has found. This is a couple that has found a way to make it goddamn work towards the things that they want. They can work toward retiring early, a goal that would be otherwise unattainable in a city as expensive as theirs. And in their day to day life, they have plenty of time for themselves. You know what? I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. What if her what if her husband find what if her husband uh has a secret child somewhere? That and that's why he doesn't want to have a child with yeah, I'm putting that in the universe now. <laughs> Part of a trend that has been underway for more than a decade. Yeah, Wallach is one of a growing number of women in the US who are opting not to have children. Part of a trend that has been underway for more than a decade. Since I don't see why they didn't start this earlier. Like, yeah. Since 2007, the nation's birth rate has been declining about 2% each year on average. Please, that's something out of the handmaid's tale. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> that is definitely something that uh, but would like come from a news article out of the handmaid's tale. Despite early speculation about a pandemic baby boom, the a pandemic baby boom, <laughs> y'all think that shit doesn't exist. It does. All y'all locked up in the house with nothing else to do but eat, sleep, clean, bathe, and fuck. The five basic food groups, that's all the five basic things you could do when you're locked away somewhere. Yeah, it's a pandemic baby boom. 
accelerated the decline even further with births falling by 4%. Okay, it did fall. It was the largest annual decline in the number of births since 1973, according to the CDC. Cool. Yeah, wow. I, I'm for it. Hey, man, kids are a blessing, but if you are in a position where you and your partner is like, yo, let's just book trips and, and work towards getting this money so we could retire early and be young and still enjoy the rest of our life child-free, if y'all both are on the same page to do that, that's a hell of a fucking game plan. Shoot. And not even to just say it now and three years later, go back and renege on it. Like, oh, well, I changed my mind. Like, to be like, yo, this is how I feel, like, all the way through the board. Dope. Last story, yo. 26 minutes. And I got to keep an eye on this because I think when I did that last night, I lost, I got the full 34 minutes of audio, but I only got like 25 minutes of video. And how that happened, I don't know. Uh, Philadelphia to require unvaccinated city employees to double mask. Come on. Philly, what type of nut ass shit you <laughs> Y'all drawing, Philly. Y'all drawing, Philly. I uh, mean, like, yeah, you doubling, doubling up on, uh, double up on condoms, double up on masks. That's the, uh, no, no. The city of Philadelphia announced this week that it will require an unvac, all unvaccinated city employees to double mask at all times on the job as a method of protecting the city from the Delta, from the Delta variant of COVID-19. Isn't that kind of like just using two coffee filters? <laughs> What the fuck? What would Rocky say? The city will require, I'm pretty sure y'all tired of hearing Rocky jokes. I'm sorry, Philly. I love you guys. The city will require, I love how I think that is the uh, the Black Art Museum right across the street from the federal prison. Yeah, I think, yeah, I like that part too. <laughs> the city will require its employees to receive a COVID vaccination by December 1st, and those who are not vaccinated at that time will have to wear a cloth mask over a disposable surgical mask. It just looked like a complete idiot. I guess it's for function, not fashion, right? Uh, of the public health on, announced on Wednesday. Meanwhile, all incoming city employees must show proof of vaccination as a condition of their employment. Of their employment. Um, a press release from the city health department said residents have a 25-fold reduction of their risk of being hospitalized or dying from COVID if they are inoculated. If my job was to make a mandatory vaccination, I would consider it. But be it that I work in an environment where I'm not, I'm, I work pretty much in an open environment. I'm basically outside. I'm not anywhere in a closed off space with anybody for no period of time during the time, any day. I'm just, I'm outside. Like I'm way more than six feet from people at any given time during the day, I don't see how, like, yeah, I really would, people that's in closed off settings like offices and classrooms, they would, I mean, there's always a chance that you could get it any type of way, but I live alone and I work in a setting where I'm isolated pretty much all damn day. So, yeah, but um, on Friday, the city where 60% uh, the population is fully vaccinated, reported 336 cases of COVID-19. So, double up your mask? Or why don't you just put, like, I don't know, put a, a bodega plastic bag over your fucking, like, right here and <laughs> use the holes of the bag for fucking ear loops? I don't know. It just seems, it seems like, like, it looks so stupid. It would seem that it's so stupid to put two masks on that they want to make you just go ahead and get the vaccine because you don't want to look like an idiot in front of all your friends. <laughs> so, that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. It's been fun. Person with the name of Patient, uh, Destiny, yeah, Destiny, yeah, uh, Hope. <laughs> God damn, yo, like, yes, please, don't let anybody, don't let anybody get you to the point. How do you fuck up a relationship with somebody named Patience? 
And that's all relationships really need, right? A heart is a house for love. But <laughs> Yo, if you fucks with the podcast, holla at me on Twitter at Rise and Shine, R-Y-E-Z-S-H-Y-N-E, or Halfcast, at Halfcast, H-A-L-F-C-A-S-T-A-J, uh, Taco Meat 5 on Instagram, T-A-C-O-M-E-A-T-0-5, or you can just reach out to me on Facebook Messenger. Uh, if you're interested in uh, my previous episodes, I can be found on Spotify or Anchor. About 120 plus episodes of just me talking shit. <laughs> and for most of those episodes, I'm kind of drunk. So, <laughs> so yo, I love you guys. I'll talk to y'all very, very, very soon. Stay safe. Don't beat no teachers up. Adios.